Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your transmission on your E90, E92. This specific car we have here is a 2012 335i with an N55 engine and a 6HP ZF automatic transmission. So we're gonna be replacing this entire transmission with a used one. Um, this is actually a 6HP21, but the process is very similar on the 19s, the 26, all of them are very similar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by removing all the covers like we've already removed. Then we're gonna remove this whole exhaust. So I've got a video that will help you to get to this step to make sure your transmission is bad or other steps that you can take before you start replacing it. Um, it's gonna be linked down below. It's the ZF 6HP troubleshooting video. Just make sure you go look at that first before you decide to replace your transmission. All right, so we're gonna pull the exhaust off first. Um, this car does have a downpipe installed. So the bolts are a little bit, they're aftermarket. They're not the same ones that were in there from factory. So your size might be a little bit different. On this, this is a 13. So we're just gonna pull off all four bolts from the flanges where it meets the downpipe, and then we'll continue pulling off the stuff from the back. Once you have removed the nuts from the front where it attaches to the downpipe, we're gonna keep scooting back. We're gonna remove the section that attaches to this bracket on the transmission, and we're also gonna remove this bolt right here. Yours is gonna be different. This one, the previous people had stripped it, so we had replaced it with a 13 millimeter bolt. So we're gonna pull that one off first. Now we're gonna remove these two bolts and nuts. So there's a 13 millimeter nut on each side, and on this side it's a 10 millimeter bolt. So you have to hold the nut in place and unscrew the bolt. So what you have is, you have the nut on this side, you have a rubber grommet in the middle, and you have the bolt and the rubber grommet on the other side as well. And this bracket comes off the top of the exhaust. Now we're gonna remove this brace from the back. It's held in with eight T50 bolts, so Torx 50. So get all, all eight of those off. You also have these two bolts right here. These are size 18 millimeter. One on this end and one on this end. So these bolts are gonna be really tight. I already loosened them with the actual breaker bar. Now I'm just gonna take them off the rest of the way with my drill. Hold that bar on that side. All right, take it over there. Now, as you can see, this does have somewhat of a custom exhaust. The muffler has been deleted. So this whole heavy section of the muffler, if you have yours on your car, you're gonna have other brackets um, and you're gonna have to remove them. So this one does not have those brackets. Uh, we just have a custom one, wherever the exhaust shop did. And we just have two 10 millimeter bolts holding the back section in place and we have this section as normal, which we are gonna remove this one. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna remove the nut from the differential bolt that this uh, rubber hanger is attached to, because these rubber hangers are really hard to pull off usually, especially when they're a little bit older, so they get really dry and brittle. So we're just gonna go ahead and just pull off the nut on both sides, and it's an 18 millimeter nut. All right, so as you can see, our exhaust bracket is different since we don't have a muffler. Depending on what you have, you might have a 13 millimeter nut or a 12 millimeter nut. Just double check and you'll see where the hanger attaches to the muffler. All right. Let's go. Next, we're gonna remove this heat shield to release the drive shaft. So like I said before, someone replaced the transmission about a month and a half, two months ago, and they did not put everything back. So we're missing a bunch of these nuts. We're missing a couple of bolts as well. Take off the nuts and there's also a couple of bolts. So whatever you see attached to this heat shield, go ahead and pull it off. And they're all gonna be 10 millimeter nuts and bolts. We're 
also gonna remove this rear section of the heat shield, which also has a nut and two bolts. It'll be a good idea to label which one went where. I mean, it's obvious, but which one overlapped. So this one was in first and the other one overlapped it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo this nut. It's a 13 millimeter nut. When we do this, it will release the shift linkage. That way we can shift the gear, put it in neutral and everything right from right here without having to bring the car back up and down all the time. So it's just a 13 millimeter nut. You just wanna loosen it. You don't have to take it off all the way. And now you should be able to put it in neutral, drive wherever you want. And since we're also gonna to have to remove this whole linkage anyways to pull the transmission down, let's go ahead and do that. The last transmission shop that, or last people that replaced the transmission, they didn't put this, they bent the clip. That's why it's so loose, it shouldn't be that loose. But we're gonna pull it off. You can use a flathead, pry against it, and then it just clips right out. Now we're gonna pull the actual linkage out. Just pull it away, and we're out. So put it in neutral, so you're gonna be in park first. Now you're gonna go one over, that's gonna be reverse, and one more is neutral. And to confirm that you're in neutral, you should be able to move the drive shaft with your hands. And that's just gonna allow us to shift the drive shaft around so we have access to all of the bolts. And then another thing you're gonna need for the drive shaft is you're gonna need a 50 millimeter open-ended wrench to release this nut that attaches to the drive shaft. This is a reverse threaded nut, so in order to loosen it, you're gonna turn it clockwise if you're facing the differential. So you're gonna turn it clockwise and that's gonna loosen the nut off of the drive shaft. The nut should remain on the differential and the drive shaft should just keep threading out. There is Loctite on here from factory, so if you need to, you might need to warm it up a little bit. I wouldn't use anything too hot, that way you don't end up melting any of the rubber or plastic around it. But first we're gonna remove these three bolts that hold in the drive shaft to the flex joint. These are all 18 millimeter bolts with an 18 millimeter nut on the other side. All right, so you can see, I already have the thread showing on this drive shaft section. Cause I already loosened the nut quite a bit. Now we're just gonna pull it off the rest of the way. And once again, you wanna turn it clockwise if you are facing the differential. So turn it towards the passenger side. Once you have the nut completely unthreaded from the differential side and also all of the bolts out from the transmission side, the last thing we have to do is release these two bolts for the center support bearing. Both of these are 13 millimeter bolts. Let it come down a little bit. Okay. Now we're gonna remove this heat shield. As you can see, they've already bent it up pretty bad, but we're just gonna go ahead and remove it the rest of the way, just so we have better access to all of the bolts. So it's held in with three 10 millimeter bolts. So this is like the extra step that you would go. A lot of people like, you know, they bent this up so bad when they could have just taken off the three bolts and you're good to go. Also remove this bracket, that way we have more space when we're dropping the transmission. Held in with a 13 millimeter bolt. Now it's always good practice to drain all the fluids out of the transmission before you remove it. That way it just makes a little bit less of a mess. I mean, there's still gonna be fluid in the torque converter when you're pulling the transmission off. So you're still gonna have quite a bit of fluid coming out, but still it's you know good to get as much of it out as you can. And it makes it a little bit lighter. We're also gonna loosen up the fill bolt. That way once the drain bolt starts you know aerating a little bit, because there's some pressure in there, you can take off the fill bolt all the way and that way it'll be a steady stream of fluid coming out. Mm -hmm. 
Now what you want to do is remove this connector from the mechatronics unit. So there's a tab right here. You're just going to push the tab up, so you're turning it counterclockwise. You can use a pry bar or a flathead screwdriver. You just push it up and keep turning it. Once you have it pushed up all the way to the top, you should be able to pull the connector off. And since we have the drive shaft and everything out, you have access from up here as well. And another thing is, you're gonna have this uh, harness is gonna be clipped to the transmission. Uh, on this car, when they did the transmission replacement last time, they didn't hook it back up to the top, so it's not clipped in. So it's kind of loose, so I can just move it around. Now we're gonna remove the engine cooling fan, that way we have more space to turn the crankshaft, that way we have access to the torque converter bolts. In order to do that, we have to remove this air cowl first, held in with two T20 bolts. And we have an aftermarket air box. If you have the stock one, you're gonna have two clips over each one of these tabs. So just release the clips a little bit and just wiggle that off. And you just wanna tilt it out. Disconnect the connector for the fan. You have two tabs. One on this side, one on that side. You also have this coolant line that runs across the top of the fan. It's just clipped in. You want to be careful because this line is sometimes very brittle. Now we have a T25 bolt right here on the side of the fan. This is on the passenger side. And you have one exactly like this at the bottom of the fan where the transmission heat exchanger attaches to. So you just have that one bolt. We're missing the one on here, so we're not gonna worry about it. When I get it back up there, I'll show you exactly where it's at. And then one other thing that you're gonna have, if you have the factory charge pipe, you're gonna have a rubber grommet that attaches to this uh, fan assembly right here. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to lift up on that rubber attachment, that whole charge pipe, lift it up and pull it off of that bracket. Since this is an aftermarket charge pipe, we don't have that. So we're just gonna be able to lift the fan up and out. There's one more tab on the side of the fan that attaches to the radiator. You're gonna push the tab towards the engine and that should release it. So here's the grommet where you would have your factory charge pipe. You have to lift it up and off of the fan. Here's a tab that you want to push towards the engine. And here is where that T25 screw goes to the radiator. The bottom one. And on the bottom, this is where that heat exchanger goes for the transmission and just one screw right there, which is also a T25. All right, so now that we have the fan out, we have more access to put a socket on the crank pulley. This is a 22 millimeter socket. And the main reason you want to do this is so that we can turn the whole crankshaft and that will also turn the flywheel in the back and then we'll have access to the torque converter bolts through this hole. Uh, the previous shop, they forgot to put the cover back on, but if you have, if yours hasn't been messed with, you're gonna have a little black rubber slash plastic cover. Just pop that off with the screwdriver and then you should be able to see the bolts through here. So you can see the bolt right in that hole. And in order to see it, you might have to actually turn the crankshaft with the socket. So just turn it clockwise until you see a bolt in there. And then we're gonna take it off. The torque converter bolts are 17 millimeter. So you wanna just get a breaker bar with 17. Make sure you're on the bolt properly and then just crank it loose. And once you have it loose, you should be able to take it out with your finger. And there's the bolt. Now you want to keep turning the crankshaft until you see another one. All right, so now I'm turning the crankshaft until we see the next bolt. So you do this until you get all six bolts out. So 
So once you have all six bolts removed, what you want to do is you want to push the torque converter back into the transmission. So what that's going to do is that's going to secure the torque converter all the way into that input shaft. That way, whenever you separate the transmission from the engine, the torque converter will go with the transmission and will not be stuck on the flywheel. In order to do that, you could just use a pry bar or something and just pry against the torque converter. You might have to wiggle it around a little bit until it gets to the right spot. All right, so once you've pushed the torque converter back, you see a little gap between the flex plate and the torque converter. So you should feel it like go in um, one way. If it doesn't, then just keep twisting the torque converter until it does. Usually, wherever you take the bolt out, wherever that lines up, it should just slide right in. But if it doesn't, just turn it a little bit and you'll be good to go. All right, so now we're pretty much ready to start taking off the bolts around the bell housing. First, we're just gonna take out this harness. This connector goes to the oil level sensor. Just push the two tabs on each side, release it. Now in order to get the top of the transmission bell housing bolts as well as the sides and pull off the harness and also the transmission cooler lines, we are going to have to drop the back of the transmission, tilt it back. The engine should allow to tilt back a little bit. If anything, you can put a jack or something right around here to hold the engine from twisting far back. Um, but regardless, you do want to jack somewhere along this. We're just gonna put it on the transmission mount and just bring it down. And that will allow us to keep control of the whole thing so it doesn't just slam down. And we'll also have enough access to everything else. And I'm not too worried about damaging these mounts. We're replacing them anyways. We're also replacing the filter slash pan assembly. So that even if that gets damaged, we're not too worried. And that's the main reason I also drained as much of the fluid as I could. That way if anything does puncture or anything, we don't make a huge mess. All right, so with this held in with the pull jack, I'm gonna release these four bolts. They're 13 millimeter bolts. Here's what the bolts look like so you don't get mixed up. They have a little round edge to it. And once again, they are 13 millimeter bolts. Now I'm going to slowly lower the transmission. It will tilt the engine back as well until we have enough access to everything. All right, so if your engine is not tilting back far enough, um, if you want at least a couple of inches that we have access to the top. Sometimes if you have any other aftermarket stuff like this car does, this one has an aftermarket intercooler. There's a lot of pressure on these hoses. So it's a good idea to go ahead and loosen the clamps and remove the silicone hoses. So chances are, the reason that one was popped off was whenever they replaced the transmission last time, they had tilted it back without loosening the clamps and it just popped out of there because there was so much pressure on it. That one has enough play. Now we're gonna remove the connector that was attached to the mechatronics unit. We're gonna remove it and set it to the side that way we don't damage it. And you can see there's these two clips that have these little forks. So you have one right here and one towards the front of the transmission. You will have to lift those up off of the transmission before you can actually move it over. Now we're gonna loosen this nut for the oil cooler lines. It attaches to the oil pan, and when you loosen the nut, you don't have to remove it all the way, but when you loosen it, it's gonna make a little bit more of a space between the bolt and the section where it slides into on the oil pan, and that'll allow you to pull the oil, coolers, oil cooler lines down. And that's just a 10 millimeter nut. Now once you have it loose, you should be able to move this up and down like how I am. And now we're gonna actually remove the oil cooler lines themselves. 
have a drain pan or something ready because it will drip. This is just a 13 millimeter bolt. Once you have the bolt out, you can pull this bracket retainer away from the actual transmission and then you can twist it up and over. That way it gets off of this line as well. And then all you have to do is just release the lines, just pull them out. And as I said, there will be some transmission fluid that does come out. You don't want to put too much pressure on these lines because they do run to the front where the transmission heat exchanger is. All right, so here we have the replacement transmission that's going in. I'm just going to show you where all of the bolts are around the transmission and the sizes. That way you know what to expect. So we're going to start off, this is the very top. So this is the reason we lower the back of the transmission so we have access to these two bolts. Both of these are going to be E14, so external torques 14. Then you're going to have this one that goes to the starter. That's going to be external torques 12. Then you're going to have this bolt right here, which is the external torques 18. This one all as well is external torques 18. This one is an E10 that goes to the oil pan. On this side, once again, that's that top one. That's E torques 14. This one's E torques 18. This one's E torques 18. Then we have two more bolts at the bottom, which are E torques 10 and those also go to the oil pan. All right, so now let's take it off of the transmission. Now you can see I've, I still have everything lowered. I dropped the back of the transmission and I have enough space from here to get to those bolts. In order to do that, I'm gonna need a really big extension. So here's my big extension. This is just straight. Then we've got another big extension, semi big, that has a swivel end to it. And then I've got a variety of these external torque sockets. I've got some deep ones and some narrow ones. And you do want to have those both deep and narrow just in case if you can't get on it. And you also want a flashlight because it's going to be really dark up there. So what I like to do is I like to take off the very top bolts first, the ones that I showed, and take off the top bolts as well as the bolts that go to the starter. And by now, if you don't have your battery disconnected, make sure you disconnect it because you do not want the starter to arc on anything. We are going to push the starter from the transmission. We're going to push it out. So it's going to be underneath the intake and it's going to go fall back a little bit. And it is pretty much exposed. There's no covers on it. So if it does, you know, the positive terminal grounds out on anything, you're going to have a spark. You don't want that. So make sure you have your battery disconnected. It's going to be really hard to show the bolts while I'm taking them out. I've actually already went ahead and loosened them. That way, you know, it's easier for me to show on the camera. But yeah, so first I'm going to take off the top two. Not the one that goes to the starter, but the other ones. And these are external Torx 14. Now I like to take off the top ones first and then I'll hook the transmission mount back to the body and screw in the bolts. That way I can put my transmission jack underneath and then take the ones off from the bottom half. And the main reason I like to do that is that way you don't risk the transmission and the engine separating at all. You don't want to put any other stress on any of the other bolts. There's going to be a little bit more stress on, that, on the lower half when you have the top bolts removed, but it's still not going to be as bad as if you were only having two bolts on there or something like that. Now once you have it loosened all the way, you do want to get like a magnet or something to grab it. So here's the one that's at the very top. You're not going to be able to use the magnet on all of them because some of the bolts are aluminum. But the top two, these are the E-Torx 14. They are not aluminum so you can use the magnet. Here's the second one, same size as the first one we took off. This is the first one that we took off right at the very top. Here's the second one that goes right here. This is just like a stopper so the torque converter doesn't fall out but this one goes right here. So these are two E14. Now this one is the starter bolt, this one's an E12, and this one is an aluminum E18. Now the only reason I use the drill is because I already loosened it with the breaker bar and got it off a couple of turns. Now this is the E12 that goes to the starter.
Now these are the aluminum bolts. This one is the one that goes to the starter. We are gonna have to replace these because um, these are one-time use stretch bolts. And it doesn't seem like they replaced them last time, but we will go ahead and do it. Now here's the other one on the other side. E14 from right here. E18 from right here. Now we have another E18 right there, which we're gonna leave attached. One right here, which we're gonna leave attached. And the rest are the E10s. So now that we have these top ones out, which are the hardest, we can go ahead and put the transmission back up. So I only put two on. We don't need to worry about putting all of them in since we're not driving the car like this. This is just to hold it in place while we remove the rest of the bolts. Now I'm gonna remove this E10 bolt from the oil pan. It goes from the transmission to the oil pan. We have three of them. One right here, one on here, and one right here. We'll start off with this one. Damn, they really tightened it. No bueno. These three bolts that go to the oil pan, they're all the same size. And these are not aluminum. So now the only bolts holding the transmission to the engine are these two E18 bolts and one up here on this corner. Now he just put the transmission jack underneath and then he removed all the bolts and it should be out. Easy as pie. Is it pie? <laughs> Easy peasy lemon squeeze. Can't go wrong with that. And don't try to reuse this pan because no matter what kind of jack you use or whatever, this pan's pretty much trash. And you shouldn't be reusing a pan with a broken transmission anyways. If this pan ever comes off, it's like a hundred bucks, replace it. All right, bolts can come out. Bam. There's two. And the last one. Now I've got the engine supported from the front. We have this pull jack, that way it doesn't tilt too far forward. Even if it did, it would land on the subframe um, and there's other stuff that's in between. But just to be safe, we have that. Another thing you can do is put an engine support bar from the top. Um, once the transmission is off, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And the thing with the engine support bar, if you have that on the top, you're not gonna be able to tilt the transmission far back enough or you know move it around as much as you would need to. So this is another way to do it. If you're gonna leave the transmission off for a while. In that case, I highly suggest putting an engine support bar on the top and just keeping the engine stable so that's don't put too much pressure on the mounts. All right, now we just have to finish taking off this bolt and we should be good to pull it off the rest of the way. That's the last E18. And one thing you wanna do while you're separating the engine and transmission, once you start loosening the last bolt, it should automatically start separating a little bit. But what you want to do is you want to make sure you're pushing the torque converter into the transmission as much as you move the whole thing back. So we're pretty much separated at this point. I'm gonna lower this transmission jack a little bit. So we've got the transmission separated from the engine for the most part. I can't really push it back any further because this transmission mount arm is hitting the stud on the body for one of those heat shields. So we're just gonna remove this whole arm 
from the transmission mounts. So you're just gonna need a 13 millimeter socket and there's just two nuts. Now we can continue pushing the transmission back. And as we can see, it's fully separated. And we can lower it some more. As you're lowering it, you are gonna have to keep pushing it further back. That way the side of the transmission doesn't hit the downpipe. Otherwise it will get stuck on there. Once you have enough clearance, you can just lower it the rest of the way. Now, as you can see, we've got the torque converter out. This section right here does sometimes get stuck right into the crankshaft, right behind the flywheel, um, especially in climates where it rusts a lot. If that does happen, what might happen is the torque converter will get stuck on the engine side. And if that happens, you are gonna make a lot more of a mess. Because as soon as you pull the transmission off, you're gonna have to pull it off of the torque converter as well. That does make the process a lot harder, which is why I always recommend try to push the torque converter with the transmission. So make sure that torque converter is going into the transmission as much as you can. And it only goes in uh, in certain ways. So it might not go in all the way, but as long as you have this section pulled out of the crankshaft, you're gonna be good. All right, so we've got the transmission out. I think this is a pretty long video already. I think we're just gonna end the DIY here. So we're just gonna call it the removal of the transmission. I know usually whenever I do a DIY, I show you how to put everything back together as well. Um, but we just gotta get this car done. That way we can work on some other projects. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you go check out the new merch that we have on our website at shoplifetv.com. Um, there's going to be behind the scenes footage and all that stuff as well as other projects that we've been doing on the vlog channel. So go check that out if you have some time. Besides that, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in my next video.